Life after death. It's a subject we've all thought about. Is it possible to actually exist after you die? Is it possible to be conscious of things after you die? Some people call them NDEs, that is near death experiences. But technically speaking, I'm not talking about somebody who almost died, who came near to death, but I'm talking about somebody who actually died and came back to tell about it. Is that possible? We've all heard stories of people who said that they've died and they've came back and they've had experiences beyond death. How do we know that those experiences are actually real? That it's not just a hallucination? Now there are people all over the world, from every background, from every age, from every generation that have claimed to have somehow had a experience that was beyond death. Can they all be liars? Can they all be hallucinating? Now I have spent almost 30 years combing through testimonies of people who have claimed to have had a life after death experience. Even my grandmother said that my great-grandmother had one of these experiences. So I have heard a lot of stuff. And certainly, just like anything else, you will have people that are not really all that there. <laughs> They're, they are people who are hallucinating and who do have delusional experiences. We're not going to deny that. But there are a lot of experiences that simply cannot be written off as hallucinations. For example, there's a story of a woman who was in the hospital and she was near death and she actually flatlined and she actually died. She actually clinically died. And she said that when she died, she was actually out of her body and she was there in the hospital room watching the, the doctor and the nurses try to resuscitate her. And she went out of the room and she went down the hall of the hospital, she said, and she went to the waiting room where she saw other family members and other friends that have been called to the hospital because, well, you know, she was on her deathbed. And she said that she went in that waiting room and she overheard her brother-in-law say, well, I was just going to go on my business trip and now I'm going to have to be a pallbearer. Oh, I mean, isn't that like, I, he was complaining about the, the possibility of being a pallbearer for her. And she said shortly after that, she was resuscitated and boom, she was back in her body. And, you know, everybody started coming in to visit her, you know, see how she was doing. And of course, at this time she was you know, resuscitated and she had her eyes open and she was able to articulate things. And she said she saw her brother-in-law come into the room and the first thing she said to him is she said, you know what, you can go on your business trip. Next time I die, just go on your business trip. I just, I don't, I would rather not have you be a pallbearer after all, okay? Don't worry about being my pallbearer. And he was shocked. Now, how did she know what her brother-in-law said in another part of the hospital? How did she know that? How did she hear that if she was dead, when she was, and it was just a hallucination. There's another story of a woman who died in the hospital and she claimed that she was taken up right up on the roof, that she was right up on the roof of the hospital after she died and she said she saw a shoe there up on the roof of the hospital. And she thought, wow, this is somebody's shoe. How did this happen? And she was resuscitated minutes after that and she, she came to and she said, you know, I was just out of my body and, and there's a shoe and she described this, the shoe the color of it, the brand of it. And she said, there's this shoe up in the, at the hospital, on the roof. And uh, I, I thought that was just very, you know, uh, uh, unusual to see a, sh a shoe up there. And everybody was like, oh, you know, you, you, you were certainly not feeling very good. So, I mean, you just need to have a little bit of rest. And, and one of the hospital workers thought, hmm, let me see if I can go up there and just, just, just curious, just curious. Is it possible that a shoe is up there? So the hospital worker went up on the roof, which incidentally, nobody is allowed up there. Nobody can get up there except for people who are authorized. And sure enough, just as that lady said, right down to the color and the brand and exactly where that shoe was, that shoe was up there. Now, if it was just a hallucination, how did that woman know? Is it possible to hallucinate something that's actually real? Um, you tell me. 
And there's another story of a woman who was on her deathbed and she was expected to die very soon. Someone called home. There was a babysitter who was looking after her little, little girl. And uh, they said, you better come in because uh, we think that she's going to she's not going to last very long here. And uh, apparently the woman actually died uh, before the uh, the daughter came uh, to the hospital. Well, the babysitter, in the meantime, she was frantic and, and she was like, well, how, I'm, you know, she didn't know what to do. I mean, the, the girl wasn't dressed properly uh, to go out to go to the hospital. So she just ran to the to the girl's room and and picked out some mismatched clothes and put it on the girl and then left. And that woman was resuscitated later and she claimed to have actually went out of her body and she claimed to have seen uh, her daughter. And, and the first thing she said, before the daughter even came into the hospital room, the first thing she said is, why is my daughter wearing such mismatched clothes? And they're like, well, what are you talking about? Well, you know, I was out of my body and I saw my daughter wearing these clothes. Like, why, how, why was she dressed like that? They're like, oh, you got to be just, you know, seeing things. And sure enough, when the daughter came into the room, the daughter was wearing that. How did that woman know? Was it just a hallucination? There are many stories like that. Other stories such as uh, Colton Burpo, a little boy who, uh, who died in the hospital. And he claimed to have went to heaven and have you know, actually meet his sibling who was miscarried, who died in the womb, along with a lot of other family members that have went on before him. And when he he actually was resuscitated later, he came back to life later, and he, he was talking to his parents, and he said, you know, I met my sister up there. And they're like, what sister are you talking about? You don't have a sister. Oh, yeah, I have a sister. They're like, no, <laughs> no, it's just, you know, you don't have a sister. He said, yeah, the one that, that died in your womb, mummy. I met her. And they're like, they're completely shocked because they never ever told the little boy about that miscarriage. Also, that little boy also was able to identify people in photographs, old photographs of people who have died long before he was born. He identified them by name and he didn't know that the parents said they didn't teach him this. They didn't tell him any of this stuff, who these people were. He was able to identify these people. How is that possible? Did the little boy just have just a hallucination? Or is it real? Is life after death real? But there are a lot of people who claim to have died and have went to heaven. There are also a lot of people who claim to have died and went to hell. Once again, people from all over the world, from all different backgrounds, and they all explain heaven in a very similar way, and they explain hell in a very similar way as well. How is that possible? You know, the scriptures tell us, the scriptures tell us, let everything be settled by two or three witnesses. We have a whole lot more than just two or three witnesses when it comes to life after death. And how is it that these witnesses explain things strikingly similar to one another, even if they're not part of the same church, not citizens of the same country. I mean, people who have no connection to one another at all, even atheists who have died and have experienced life after death. And for those of you who want to look into this further, to research for yourself, I submit to you the 10-minute rule. You say, what is the 10-minute rule? Well, in my own personal studies and research when it comes to NDEs, life after death, I find that there are a few people who have claimed to have died and went in, you know, went to the lights. You know, they, there's a lot of people that say they, they go through a tunnel and, they, and there's a light at the end of the tunnel or they even just go to the light even without a tunnel. They, they go to the light. A lot of people recognize that light as Jesus. Some people don't. But some people say they go to that light, they spend a little bit of time there, they talk to the Lord or they talk to angels, and then afterward they're sent to hell. And so according to them, it is possible to die, to go and see the Lord, to see the light, to go to the light, and then to go to hell afterward. So one of the purposes of researching and studying life after death is to know who goes to heaven 
And who doesn't? I mean, we read about it in the scriptures. We know that those who obey God, those who follow his commands are going to heaven. Those who don't will go to hell. I know that some of you say, well, everybody who comes to Jesus will, will go to heaven. That's not what Jesus said. I know that's what your favorite evangelist preaches, but Jesus himself in Matthew chapter 7, verses 21 to 23, said it's possible to believe in him, to come to him, to have faith and not secure heaven as your home because of iniquity in your heart, lawlessness in your life. And so studying this subject of heaven and hell, who said they went to heaven, who said they went to hell, confirms what the scriptures actually say. But in studying who actually goes to heaven, who goes to hell, you need to always apply the 10 minute rule. For those who were dead longer than 10 minutes, I mean clinically dead, flatlined, they were pronounced dead for at least 10 minutes. They have a much higher degree of accuracy in regards to whether or not they actually go to hell or go to heaven, or should I say, stay in heaven. Because some people actually say they go to heaven first, then they go to hell. They go, to, they go see the Lord first, and then he says, no, you go to hell, okay? Whereas other people, they say they die and they just instantly go to hell. And so the 10 minute rule goes like this. For those people who claim to have went to heaven for less than 10 minutes, you have to take that with a grain of salt. So it is possible if they were dead for longer than 10 minutes that they might have ended up in hell. So don't put all your faith in people who have been dead for only just a few minutes, okay? Now in regards to the similarities between many, many, many people who testify that they've went to heaven or went to hell, there are people who claim to have went to hell and it's just darkness. Now, that is in scripture as well. We know that Jesus talked about outer darkness, that they will be locked in outer darkness. That's hell. There are some people who actually said that they have experienced the fire of hell, the torment of the burning fire of hell. And you know, that's also scriptural. Consider, for example, Luke chapter 16, where the rich man went to hell and he was in fire and torments and burning. So there are the two different stages or the two different levels of hell or the two different places of hell. There is the darkness of hell and there is the fire of hell. Other than that, a lot of people testify about the loneliness in hell. Even though there are millions, if not billions of people in hell, it says that each one is so lonely. There is no communication. There's no sense of warmth or love or community there. Each person is locked in their own loneliness. And of course, there are a lot of people who can testify of the torment of hell, not just pain as in burning, feeling the fire, the burning from the fire, but also emotional, mental torment. A lot of people can testify of the horror of hell. Interestingly enough, a lot of people actually said they saw pastors in hell, church leaders in hell. And that is also significant to understand because if you're going to a church and I mean, I know it's very hard it may be almost impossible for you to imagine your pastor in hell. Also, a lot of people testify of people in hell that are praying for their loved ones, that their loved ones don't go there. There are a lot of people who said they've died, they went to hell, and there's these people in hell in torment, and they're, they're yelling to, these, to, to this person saying, go and tell my family, my friends, not to come here. That's a common thing that people see in hell. And that's also scriptural because in Luke chapter 16, it talks about the rich man begging that someone comes back from the dead to go warn his family not to go to hell. And there are a lot of people who testify that hell is a place of no return. Once you are truly in hell, once you are locked in hell, you are locked there forever. And again, Luke chapter 16 testifies of that. There is no going back and forth between heaven and hell. Once you're there, you're there for good. And another thing that's very common when it comes to people who say they went to hell is that their lifestyles were that of recklessness, a lot of drinking, a lot of drugs and partying, you know, sex, drugs, and rock and roll kind of thing. On the other hand, people who went to heaven, a lot of people can testify of very, very similar things in heaven as well. The colors, the music, the beautiful music, the beauty, the peace, the love in heaven. 
biblical characters there in heaven. And another very interesting thing is that a lot of people who have went to heaven also said that they saw a place in heaven where there is millions and millions and millions of little children and babies. And the Lord says to them, these are the children that were aborted. A few takeaways. Number one, we know that there is sufficient evidence that there is life after death because of many, many people who have claimed to have died and come back and testify, witnessed, seen, or heard things in a different part of the hospital or in somewhere else that there is absolutely no possible way for them to know that unless they were there spiritually, by their spirit. Number two, it's very important to study life after death experiences because this will help you tell other people about the gospel, why you should repent, why you should believe, because life after death is real and you don't want to end up in hell. And number three, apply the 10 minute rule when it comes to really discerning who goes to heaven and who goes to hell. Because a lot of people would say, well, you know, well, my so-and-so, he, you know, really lived a real bad life according to Christian standards, and he died and he went and he saw the light. Well, how long was he dead? Well, he was dead for two minutes, three minutes. Well, sorry, I can't judge by that. Give it at least 10 minutes, because there's a lot of people who die, they see the light, they see the Lord, they see the angels, and then they're out of there. And finally, the similarities between heaven and hell testify of their true existence. If the information that I shared with you on this video has blessed you, make sure you're subscribed, make sure you like, and share this video. Share with some of your family. Share it with some of your friends. Send them links to this video. Post it on social media. Until next time, seek God with all your heart. And if you do, you will find him. If you seek him with all your heart. Call upon him and he will show you great and mighty things. Love you guys.